What's up my friends, welcome back! This is a persistent of vision or better know a POV display and it's based on Arduino. The LEDs are blinking so fast while the propeller is spinning that you get the illusion that the light from the LEDs is drawing shapes, since the lights are always turning on in the same spot. In this project we will see how to show text, time as a real clock or any other shape. So how we manage to keep this so synchronized? The secret is this small magnet here and the whole sensor. Ok, so let's see how to build our own homemade and Arduino based POV display. So let's get started! What's up my friends, welcome back! Let's see how to build this awesome POV display that could show text, time or any other shape. So we have a line of LEDs here. In my case 8 green LEDs, 2 red and 1 blue. We also have a DC motor that will spin the entire propeller. The Arduino inside will control the LEDs and turn them on and off when needed. In order to synchronize each spin on the other side of the propeller, I've placed a whole sensor switch. This sensor will give a low pulse each time that I place a magnet in front of it and a high pulse the rest of the time, as we can see here on my oscilloscope. I now have 5 volts. I approach the magnet and the voltage drops to ground. Simple, right? So here is how easy this will go. We will create an interruption inside of the Arduino code that will detect the low pulse given by the whole sensor. Using a time counter we measure the time it takes the propeller to make a full spin by measuring the time between each pulse given by the whole sensor. If we know the time for a full rotation we could easily calculate the time for just one degree just by dividing the full time that we have just measured by 360 degrees. Great, let's imagine for this example that we want to draw a full line at 45 degrees. I will use this prototype on a PCB to show you first how this work. Each time we detect a low pulse of the whole sensor, we will also reset a second counter named a lapse loop counter and that will give us the zero point. So we start with all of the LEDs turned off. Inside of the main loop, we will always count the time with the second loop counter. We know the time it takes to make just 1 degree, so we could easily obtain the time it takes to make 45 degrees in this case, by multiplying that value by 45. When the elapsed loop counter is higher than 45 degrees, we turn the LEDs on and after just one more degree I turn them off. That will give us the full line of LEDs at 45 degrees while spinning. And since the system is synchronized each loop with the whole sensor, we will always have the line at exactly 45 degrees. I first upload the code to this prototype made on a PCB. As you can see I have the battery in the middle, the sensor on one side of the PCB and the LEDs on the other. The Arduino will do all the fast switching of the LEDs. I place the magnet on my workshop table and start spinning the prototype with my drill at a medium speed. I get the whole sensor close to the magnet and there you go. I always have a line at 45 degrees because the whole sensor will synchronize the time and also reset the counter for each loop. Now that we know the basics of a POV clock, let's build this awesome project. I've got my 8 green, 1 blue and 2 red LEDs. For each LED we will need a 100 ohm resistor to limit the current and also to make sure that we won't burn the LEDs. The prototype is built using a 3.3V 8MHz Arduino Pro Mini due to its size and voltage. With this Arduino I could directly use a 3.7V LiPo battery cell with no external voltage regulator and that will simplify the project a lot. But after some tests I realized that I need more than 8 MHz to make this project fast enough. For that this time I will use the Arduino Nano with a 2S 7.4V battery connected to the V-in pin. We will also need a hole sensor switch. I've used the A3144 hole sensor. Make sure you use a hole sensor switch, not a linear sensor that will give you a linear output depending on the magnetic field. Finally, we will need some drilled PCB, a sliding switch, wires and a 3D printed case that I've designed together with some 8mm screws, nuts and bearings. 
If you don't have a 3D printer, you should manage to build your own prototype as I did in this example and build a support maybe out of wood or acrylic. Just make sure that the PCB propeller is well balanced and keep heavy components as center as you can. This is the schematic for this project. Download it from a link below and have it in front of you while soldering. I've used my dear Creality CR10 3D printer and 3D printed this case for this project. You have the files in the description below as always. These files include the main case, the back lid, the motor support, the two legs for the bearings and the top bearing supports. This should be the final shape of the entire project. Use M3 screws and nuts to fix everything in place as I did on this piece of wood. Let's mount the project. First of all, on a separated small drill PCB that will fit inside of the case, I soldered the 8 green LEDs in a straight line. Then the two red ones and finally the blue one. All the LEDs are sharing the ground pin, which is the shorter one as you can see here, where all the negative pins are soldered together. Then to each of the positive pins I solder a 100 ohm resistor. Once that is done I solder a long enough wire that will later be soldered to the Arduino pins. I glue in place the PCB on the 3D printed case so the LEDs are facing the hole in the case, so we will see the light on the other side. Now I solder each LED wire from digital pin D2 to D12, as in the schematic. I also connect the ground wire. Now on a separated smaller PCB I solder in place the hole sensor with a pull up 1K ohm resistor between 5V and the signal pin and solder 3 wires for 5V, grunt and signal. I glue the hole sensor PCB on the other side of the propeller with the sensor on the outside of the propeller. Finally I solder the 3 wires from the sensor to ground 5V and digital pin 13 which is the pin that will create the interruption. I solder the slide switch and glue it on the back lid. Connect the battery through a jumper pin, so I could later take it out for recharge. I connect the other pin from the switch to the V-in pin and we are done. Now when I turn on the switch the Arduino is powered. I've placed the 8mm screw through the hole with nuts and washers and tied the nuts. I also add two 8mm hole bearings that will be placed on this 3D printed support. The screw will also have a 3D printed pulley connected to a DC motor that will spin the entire propeller. On the bottom part of the support I place this neodymium magnet close enough to the hole sensor. That's it! Before we look over the code we have to make sure that the propeller is balanced. Without touching the propeller it should always be as horizontal as possible. Ok. So this is the finished POV clock with the code already uploaded to the Arduino Nano. Now let's look over the code that you could also download from a link below. Make sure you read all the comments in the code in order to understand it. This is the POV clock code. You also have the POV text display code below, but I will only explain this one. Ok, so first read all this part where I define the variables that we will need, such as counters, time constants and so on. In the setup void we prepare the registers for the pin state interruption, that will create the interruption service routine each time pin 13 in this case will change its state. Also we define digital pins 2 to 12 as outputs and set them to low using these registers. We will use register control for this project instead of digital write, since in this way the switch will be much much faster. Just as an extra example in a new sketch I use digital write high on pin 3, followed by digital write low with no delay in between. Since the Arduino Uno works at 16 MHz this should create a very fast pulse. I upload the code and observe the signal on the oscilloscope. Now I do the same but using register control that will change the output value of any pin directly by changing the register value. As you can see the time difference between those two examples is huge. That's because digital write is a pre-written function that takes a lot more to be executed. Ok back to our code. 
In the interruption routine, we measure the time it takes to make a full rotation, counting the time between each pulse, given by the whole sensor on digital pin 13. In the void loop, we count the time that has passed since the last reset, which occurred at the last whole sensor pulse. So we know the time it takes to make just one degree. So we could easily calculate how much time it takes to make any amount of degrees. Using another timer, we count seconds, minutes and hours. So for example, if it's 3 o'clock, we should have an hour indicator at 90 degrees. So using an if statement, when the elapsed loop counter is higher than 90 degrees, I've turned on the green LEDs, and after just one degree, I turn them off. That should give me the line at 3 o'clock. That's it, you've got your POV clock. And by the way, this is not real time, since the clock will reset each time you turn off the Arduino. If you want real time, just start the Arduino at exactly 12 o'clock, and you're good to go. I mount everything inside of the 3D printed case, I upload the code and close the case. I power the POV clock and turn the DC motor. The speed shouldn't be too high, but neither too low. There you go, I've got myself an awesome homemade POV clock. Pretty cool, right? You've got an example code for writing text as well in the description below. Download it and read all the comments in the code in order to understand it how it works. It's more than the same as in this example, just turning on and off LEDs at a fast enough speed so your eyes won't tell the difference. I first used the blue LED to create the perimeter of the clock. But I've made an error using the green LEDs for the lines, since those are not that bright, so I've decided to not turn the blue LED, because that is so bright that you can't see the lines anymore. Here, in case of the prototype that I've made before, look how bright are the white LEDs. So there is definitely space for improvement for this project, maybe using white LEDs for the lines. So we have learned how the POV display works, how to make one, how to use registers to control the digital outputs and how to manage pin change interruption and count time and get everything synchronized. Also how to use a hole sensor and a magnet to count each rotation speed. By the way, there is no battery charging including in this schematic. Probably that will be a future upgrade. For now, just unplug the battery for external recharge and you're good to go. If you like this kind of project, check my Patreon page and support my workshop through there. I will really really appreciate that guys, since I spent a lot of money and time for each project like this. Also, check my Electronoops webpage for a lot of more tutorials and also my Q&A forum and create a new question there so me or any other member could answer it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on POV display. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my project, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys!